Okay, welcome. This is the uh, use Perl Both um, for DevConf 12. And uh, we're online, I believe the IRC online, which we had up earlier, uh, is uh, DevConf Talk Room 2. Um, and it's being, the, this BOF is being led by Gregor Herman. And uh, yeah, welcome. Thank you. Well, it's kind of administrivia. Okay, for everybody across the world, Gregor and I are discussing <laughs> which IRC channel we should direct people to. I think we should use one of them and not both. Okay, so... You want to settle on Debian Perl I guess most people are in Debian Perl, so... Let, let's use Debian Perl so that random people wandering by might actually be interested. Can so. someone go to I will do that. Uh, for those of you in Ulaanbaatar, uh, this is me signing off. <coughs> Good. Um, bienvenidos. Eh, bienvenidas. No. There are, there are no women at least in the room. Maybe at home. Oh, there's a one camera woman. Oh. Good. So, I'm confused. Okay, so this is the, the pearl. Buff, uh, more like the annual real life meeting of the Debian Pearl Group. For those following at home, the Debian Pearl Group is one of the oldest and one of the largest teams in Debian, um, large both in membership, although we're not sure about how many members are really active, but there are some 200 people. <laughs> <laughs> some 200 people in the Elias project. Large also in number of packages. I think at the moment we have something like 2,300 packages in Git repositories. That's about, I guess, 200 more than last year or something like that. They are, they are just increasing. Yeah, um, what we should check in the beginning is who cares about IRC? I think that's David already. And it would be very great if someone could take some notes and send them as minutes to the list afterwards. Thank you, Tim. Good. And. Um, oh, is this about my volume or about the microphone <laughs> volume? Oh, sorry, yes. I was just relaying from my RC that people cannot hear you hear it well, very well. Well, okay, I tried to speak a bit louder, which is not so easy. What's your volume? At 10 in the morning. At the same volume? No, no, no. He's saying that it's your volume. There is some, there is some lag. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'll be quiet now anyway. I think it would be nice for people watching at home to know our names so that they can relate the names or the nicknames to the, to the faces. So maybe we could st start with a very short introduction round. See? Ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Maybe if you want to start, just say your name and what you, you're doing in Debian. And Hi, everyone. I'm Jonathan Junior Trejo. My nickname is Jotun JR. I have been a member of the Per Group since like 2010, maybe. And I'll be working since then, trying to. <laughs> Hi, my name is Salvatore. Um, I'm a member of the Per Group since 2009, <coughs> doing there the regular work, uh, updating package, bug fixes, and so on. Uh, I'm Daniel, DKG. Uh, I don't remember what year it was that I officially put my name in the Alioth project. Um, and I haven't been particularly active, but um, I'm happy to do the little bit that I do and very happy that everybody's part of this project. Hi, I'm Tincho, Martin Ferrari, that's my name. I've been not working in the Empire Group since something like 2006. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim. Um, Darkly, it's an IRC. Um, 
Yeah. I'm not very busy. I'm Ansgar, and well, recently I haven't been that active in the Perl group because, well, I've been doing other things in Debian, like running the FTP team, and yeah, I've also written the current version of PET, so. I'm David Bremner, and I forget also, but I think 2008, nine, I, uh, no, none of us, so, Kusanagi asks on IRC, does anybody do something in Perl? And, well, Gregor does, that, that much is clear. And, and actually, a bunch of people make packages uh, for Gregor to upload, which is really great, but not all of them are here, unfortunately. Um, and I guess my main contribution to the Perl group is uh, Git troubleshooter these days. So any kind of Git problems, people should feel free to bug me about them. Well, Git problems in the Pro group, anyway. So I'll just uh, comment on that as well. Uh, in terms of, do, it's not clear what uh, the question was about doing something in Perl. Um, I know uh, many of us are packagers, but we also are users of Perl, which is why we're interested in packaging it. So I think a lot of people do actually write stuff in Perl as well. But this is more about packaging and maintaining Perl within Debian, so we don't need to go into too much detail. No, just, <coughs> just let's finish the introduction round. Yeah, but you have not. Ah, it is gone, right. <coughs> Good. Um, is Damien on IRC? Yeah. Okay, is he? Is he ready for the big thing? I might be an, oh, uh, it might be a nice I, thing to finish. I'm just asking Damian on IRC if he's ready to uh, to delete SVN, and he's welcome to interpret that as broadly as he likes. Hmm? I didn't get the, the last one. So I, I made a small joke because to delete SVN could be interpreted quite broadly, especially with FTP assistant sitting beside me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but no response from the seaside. Okay, it might be a nice thing to finish off. Okay. We, anyway. We, we, we'll do it at the end of the BOF. Right. Okay. As a kind of celebration. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what we have here is this open tasks page, which we have <coughs> cleaned up before DebConf and uh, last week during an informal meeting. Um, we now have, I think, two sections we should look at. One, one is this policy discussion sections with three items we should decide upon. And well, then there's lots of stuff about transitions, packages, tools, specific tools, recurring tasks, and whatever. And <coughs> the idea would be not to maybe spend five minutes on each of them, because we don't have this time, but to find some priorities or to get to some kind of a roadmap, what we want to um, do next year, what are the important ones that we want to tackle next year, and which other ones are just nice if someone cares about it. So if we start at the top, the policy and discussion things, well, which one do we take? Let's start with the, the last one, that's an easy one. The, the third one is the question uh, about adding a paragraph about how we handle Debian copyright in our packages. In fact, we were using copyright format 1.0 since, well, we've used various iterations of Deb5 before. But it's nowhere written down, so the idea came up to, to write it down. Salvatore has proposed a wording for it and sent it to the list. Um, 
yeah, maybe you could clarify the state. Yeah, and I got some feedback from Ge Gregor and uh, Incigeri. Um, yeah, and then uh, there was uh, one open point if the last sentence about the generic or URL should be left out, but I think if all agree on the current text, we can commit this this way and then adjust it later on if needed. Mm -hmm. Since it's so short, maybe you can just read the current text so that everyone uh, hears it again. So the current text says each package should have the copyright file given copyright following the copyright format 1.0 or newer and copyright format 1.0 as re uh, 1.0 is released together with Deven policy 393 is documented at the URL pointing there. Um, all release copyright specifications can be found under then the generic URL. Which is a directory listing, yeah. Okay, so uh, from the people here in the room, are there any further comments on this? I guess it's just documentation of of what we are actually doing. Is there some, ah yeah. Done. Well, if I remember correctly, uh, the maintainers on the copyright are optional now. So I don't know if we, are, we will still have the maintainers on the copyright, or we will just remove them. It's on the policy, the copyright form. Um, you mean maintainers that uh, the copyright holders for Debian? Mm -hmm. Slash? Uh huh. I don't think so. That's not optional, so it should compl uh, include the full copyright information. Mm -hmm. uh, what I think was made optional is listing the maintainers who initially created the package. Ah, you mean this, this sentence, this package was Debianized, which is not a word anyway, yes. by someone in 1900. That doesn't really matter for copyright information. Right. So. Uh -huh. I think it's not even in the in the specification anymore. Like it's not valid. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. So is there anything on IRC related to this question? Nothing. So I guess we can consider this <coughs> decided. And any, what, what's the word in English for everyone agrees? Uh, consensus. No, the other one. Consensus. The one with that. Abstention? No. Objection? No, the, the, the adjective for everyone agrees. And any. Uni unanimity. There appears to be unanimity right. in the room. We are unanimous. Right, that's the word. Thank you. Okay, cool. So Salvatore can just merge and push or whatever. This commit. Good. The one before sounds also not so really difficult. Um, <coughs> the question about which branch names to use in our Git repositories for, I guess it was for backports or for testing proposed updates and, well, so for non standard, for everything else besides Master Pristine, Master Pristine Dine. And upstream, it would be nice to use the same branch names. I'm not sure. Do we have a um, proposal <laughs> already? <laughs> what I have used so far for all packages is just the uh, release code name. So it usually squeeze, except C Life, which interestingly has the branch name squeeze freeze, um, which is more like an error, but we kept it. And well, for backports, it would then just be squeeze dash backports. Yes, the only problematic thing is, I think, using experimental for uploads to experimental because it's more like a temporarily branch. So basically, you upload to experimental, then do something else maybe, or drop the entire line, and then something else ends up in experimental later, which is should not be on the same branch, probably. Mm -hmm. So what would, 
what would be a good way to handle uploads to experimental? I'm not sure. So for uh, actually, C Life was an experimental for a while, which is the 2.3 uh, series. And I just used the master branch because I intended to move it to unstable later anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I don't see a problem with using the word experimental as a branch name, even if a future experimental doesn't come off the same line. Um, you can always just put a tag on the version that was uploaded and then move the branch to be some totally different branch. That's non -fast -forward. Uh, the branch itself is non-fast forward, yes, that's right. For experimental, I, I don't particularly care that, that it's not fast forward. One thing is that right now, uh, most of our tools um, and automated to some automated tools perhaps work on the master branch as the place where the most current version of the code and packaging are. So we, we one requirement, I don't know how it affects the proposals we have at hand, uh, at least we should make this clear. We need to always need to, we need to have the most current stuff in, in the master branch at any time. Not diverge from it in an experimental branch that would be more up to date that ma than master, I think. Is this a PET requirement or what tools need things on specific branches and whose author should be punished. <laughs> Pet author? Uh, PT doesn't really care, though it displays the current head by default, but you could tell it to display something else. Well, another point is if we fork uh, experimental branch of master and do the work he there during the freeze, What's master branch for right now? It becomes useless? The master branch could be used for if there's, if uh, RC bugs come up in the package uh, that can't be dealt with in the newer, ver that, that when we can't upload the newer version, well, you can fix those bugs in the master. So that would be for bugs we can fix for, for going through in stable, right? right? Yeah. Okay, and for bugs we cannot fix by going through unstable, the, that would be a wheezy branch. Okay, fine with me. The only problem I see is that, uh, as much as I remember how PET is still working, which I'm not so sure, but uh, by having, you always have a default branch you're following, so these things like uh, having changed an experimental or some proposed uploads branch will not be properly reported in PET, so maybe we will need to to do some, some extra support for that, no? It was also a problem since the very beginning with PET. Well, it's a problem that we have mainly because we've successfully migrated to, to Git, right? I mean, we didn't have the problem because we weren't. Okay. Well, um. I, it doesn't sound like there's any concern with just Ansgar's proposal of just using, just using the release names, right? Right. The, using the code names. And so for the proposed updates, that's going to be squeeze dash proposed dash updates. Just squeeze. Uh, squeeze proposed updates is anyway just an alias for squeeze. No, actually the other way around. But I usually use just squeeze and uploads. So. And it ends up there anyway. So. Okay, so branch names, uh, release names, and this experimental versus master stuff. I'm not sure, but it seemed the consensus was that master was for unstable. Uh, 
that we essentially had some mental map of branches to suites. Okay. Just want to relay from IRC that uh, Jonas is asking for short names, please. Right, shorter than squeeze? <laughs> Squ. <laughs> First to letter of the release name. <laughs> okay, so that's it. Cool. Yeah, and the first point is about how do we deal with the, sta with the state that we are frozen. So shall we upload new stuff to unstable or not, or experimental or whatever. Um, two years ago when we, we were sitting in this huge auditorium in, at Columbia University in New York, uh, we decided that we will in general go on and upload new upstream releases to Unstable just because we have something like between five or ten of them per, per day and it doesn't scale to, to stop our work for half a year and, <coughs> and then find a huge pile of I don't know how many hundred packages after six months. Um, with the exception that we try to be well, a bit careful, meaning not uploading um, yeah, core packages which have many reverse dependencies uh, which already had bugs and needed more care in the last years. So we, we did not upload something like libdbi Perl or, or stuff like that. And I think it worked out quite, quite well. I think we had to go through testing proposed updates for two packages and, well, the rest was, was fine. After the freeze, when the migration was activated again, there was something like f between four and 500 packages migrating at one day. <laughs> so yeah, it's the question, do we want to make it, to do it the same this time or something differently? But this is not in conflict with what the release team was saying yesterday not allowed to unstable if it's going to go if it's not going to go into whiz is it I, I guess it it might be and we could make our plan tentative on the release team not telling us that that's a terrible plan we could also find someone from the release team and get their and get their permission to say this is We could, I mean, if we can, we could just find somebody here and say, hey, this is our plan, this is how it worked two years ago, and we would like to continue that way. Um, well, what I shortly talked yesterday, yesterday in, informally, informally with Adam, mm -hmm. and told him, yeah, we would like to do that again this way, so it seems it's okay. So okay. as soon, uh, as long we respect this rule not to update uh, critic, um, critical packages, which we know are. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Perfect, thank you. The large problem with updating packages in unstable <coughs> during the freeze is basically that it can affect other packages. So the obvious case is the library, where you change the so name. Then every dependency will not be able to be updated through, um, through unstable. unstable. The same happens if you just uh, add symbols in the library and they are actually used by other packages then. Um, this is a problem we have not have that much with Perl. It's only when the API changes in incompatible ways and the suggestion was anyway to not upload these changes if possible. Okay, so. I'm just going to ask IRC for comments. Two people on IRC say it's great, so it must be great. 
<laughs> okay, cool. Then le let's stick to it. And thanks again, Salvatore, for asking Adam. It makes it safer. Good. So we have decided everything, and we have, well, well almost 20 minutes to go to the next step, to all the ideas, tasks, <coughs> whatever we want to add a priority to. Intri, would you like to take over? Do you, do you want the, the headset? One, two, works. Okay, fine. So, uh, first of all, perhaps it's time to ask if any anyone here has um, something that should be discussed uh, in person. That would be, s and that was not in the the list we had on the wiki. Looks like <coughs> it's not the case. Fine. So, well, um, what I would love us to do right now is to pick one or a few action items from our huge to-do list, open tasks page on the wiki, and, and say, okay, this one we single it out and we, we would really like to, to, to be able to to erase it from our to-do list before next year's DevConf. For example, there are a few relatively big tasks, such I think mainly the ones that we have a hard time dealing with are the ones that require writing on or maintaining uh, our own software tools, such as DHMEC Perl, Package Check, and PET. And there has not much, there has not been that much work done on that specific topics last year, I think. Sorry if I'm, <laughs> <laughs> sorry if it's otherwise. So uh, my proposal would be to pick only one of these three ones and say that realistically we won't uh, work that much on, on all three at the same time, so we could perhaps just pick one and say, okay, how do we make things happen on package check or on the pet or whatever? How's your feeling about that? So you're asking for <coughs> feedback about uh, if people are okay with choosing one and trying to stick collectively to working on that one. Is that yes. Well, not to stick. It doesn't prevent anyone from working in, in the bits, but to well, prioritize one of prioritize them. Prioritize and and try together to to build some collective dynamics that may be useful to f so that other people get motivated and start doing stuff too. Do you have in mind which of the three you'd like to propose as the priority? Personally, I don't feel I'm competent to, to, to know which one is the most important r one right now for us or for Debian as a whole. Perhaps pets, but... So, uh, in our pre-BOF, BOF, uh, we, we wondered about if it would make sense to have PET as a Debian package. And I even thought this was a good idea before I realized it was a web application. And what do you think? Well, I'm not sure because not many people will install it anyway. And uh, yes, I don't know how to package web applications myself. So. 
I think almost no one knows how to package web applications, but uh, there's a couple good examples for packaging web applications that are in the archive. I actually think that, uh, I mean, I can, I can point to some. Um, it's, not a trivial, it's not a trivial task, but I do think that it's worth doing, particularly if we can do it in a way that we think is good, uh, to demonstrate how to put a tool that we find useful into the archive. Right, but one of the problems is that should we move PT to Elliot like we uh, planned last year <laughs> but haven't done much about it, um, then we wouldn't be able to use the package ourselves. Uh, DAC, for example, has a similar problem because, well, sometimes we're thinking about it would be nice to have a package for it, but we probably wouldn't use it ourselves. Why? because we cannot install packages on Elliot ourselves. We would always, for every change, need to go to the Elliot administrators. So uh, who are the Elliot administrators, and why would they be resistant? If we, if we demonstrate that we have decent packaging standards and we, and we make sure to backport the package that we want to squeeze, why would that? That seems like a good thing to do. On the other hand, there's always the possibility to use dpackage-x to extract it to a directory and use it from there. So you are almost using the packages. You are not using the maintainer scripts that come with it, but you are using the stuff that is actually within the package. And I think that would be a doable compromise. Is that uh, much different than not packaging it? Because you don't use the directional layout or Apache configuration that the package would ship. And yes, going through the Elliot admins, well, the main problem I see is that it's causing more work for them because we always have to bug them to install things. The work the, that we're asking of them is, uh, can you apt get update, apt get install, pet slash squeeze backports, right? Which is not a, a big task. Yeah, but you cannot fiddle with it uh, in the live systems, and which people sometimes do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be good, but it, I, I think packaging it would slow down development. OK, you can hear me. Um, if, if the main reason for packaging it is to get a bug tracker, is there any possibility we could get a, a virtual package to file uh, bugs against pet anyway? Or Well, technically, there's the Elliot request tracker, but I don't really like it myself. OK, but that's that's awful. So, um, But we could surely talk to the dead bugs people and or whoever and and get a pet dot whatever virtual probably package. yes but i think don would like to do so only for uh, debian.org services so we would need to move to debian.org first and install it on Elliot. i was going to suggest exactly that i think it doesn't make much sense the, the effort of packaging and keeping it in the package installing the machine etc just for the bug reporting i think if it, if if we want bug reporting, uh, pseudo bug is a lot better. Uh, and regarding the, the the thing about using it, using as a package application, is good if you want to to not be developing all the time in live system, which is usually a good idea. But also at the same time, the current version of Pet is not really is probably not really useful for anybody who's not Debian. I mean, not not you're not going to install it in your personal machine probably. So maybe it doesn't make much sense to spend the effort on that. At, at least maybe it shouldn't be a priority, which was where we started this discussion. And I think if somebody wants to package it, then great. But Yeah, I, I also wanted to say I think the question about PET is more um, that we as a group heavily rely on it, but de facto it's only written maintained by Ansgar, mostly because it's in Python. <laughs> so I think the question about PET is more how do we get more people in involved to, to help out Ansgar? Um, about uh, bug tracking, there's not only the possibilities of using Elioth or 
um, Bug Stevie Org, but there are also some standalone things like simple defects which would blend in to the version control system. It, it always depends on who you um, think might be reporting bug and who you want to report bugs. So maybe think about other possibilities too. Well, if you want to install all our, our own bug tracking software, we would need to run on Elliot. And I'm not sure if installing web applications there is a great idea because uh, I have already seen some groups using totally outdated wikis which had security issues and were basically full of spam. Simple defects is not a web application. It blends directly into the version control system. So it's directly with the code, we have the bugs next to the code and it's distributed bug tracking system through that. Okay, that would be fine with me, but the problem is always, well, people need to use it, so. I will say also in, in general, having a nice system that is BTA, the BTS, I wonder if it makes any sense to start using a new tool. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not such a big deal to have another virtual package. In, in fact, mentors.debian.net is already an example of a non-debian.org service which has which got a pseudo package. And well, uh, well, sponsorship requests. But it, that's not okay, it's not about the service. I, I don't know that this is the best, that it's the best. We, can, we just need to go find Don and talk to him about it. I, I agree. So if we, sure. if we think that a pseudo package is the right. So should we pursue a pseudo package? At least see if Don likes the idea? I, w I volunteer to do that. Well, it's done then. Okay. <laughs> so bug tracking is sorted out, cool. And uh, well, we about pet on this page we have packaging, so we have discussed this already. We have some infrastructure issues about who has access to the pet that runs the box that runs pet and who is allowed to restart it when it needs some hand messaging. And what could be done to solve this next year? There well, that's mostly moving to Elliot again. Uh, or people asking me to get access. I think there are two members of the Perl group who have access. Surprise. Yeah. Um, well, and I think, well, there's also the database alone. If you want to access that, you can also ta uh, ask me, and I can, well, allow connecting over the net from a static IP. Just a bit from the past, uh, we used to have an, uh, an automatic post commit hook that will export the files when there was a change and put it live Im immediately. That can be done with a branch, so it's not immediate, so you can have a development branch and a stable branch. And they have automatic scripts that avoid the need of having somebody to have permission in the machine, etc. cetera. Well, there's also a development version on the host, which is actually pt-devil.debian.net, which currently runs the same code. It's for testing out new things in the web interface. So it's easier sometimes when you can just change things there. Well, and, and currently there's the issue that uh, scanning watch files sometimes hangs. So you need to kill the process by hand. So to sum up, two, p two, per two members of the group have uh, the can do that actually to restart it by hand, right? Or yes, I miss think so. Cool. Is it a big secret to tell who, who they are so that uh, you can? Ask I have to look at myself. Salvatore just raised his hand. So I suspect that he's one of them. Yeah, he is one of them. One of them. So if we feel it's 
enough to, to solve the, uh, probably this was a non-issue then and we can just drop it from the list. Looks like we are fine. And the last mm, part of this, uh, about PET on this page was about adding new features. So, well, um, one thing is probably to list new features we would need here in a way that they can be prioritized and then that we sounds like the BTS probably yes probably and then finding actual people to do the work I have no idea how well how the, the original pet developer feels about adding new features or acting as a maintainer who would review pull requests some people would send. Uh, or if, for example, if we find someone from, say, the Haskell group and they say, hey, we use uh, pets too, we need that feature, uh, what do I say to them? Wha what the workflow? How, sh how do they contribute? Well, I uh, don't have that much time for PT myself currently, so I'm working mostly on other things. Um, but I'm fine with merging changes and reviewing them, and well, and then handing off full permissions to other people as well. I think it's hosted on Elliot already, so you can comment there if you're a member of the PT group. Okay. Um, do you think it would be a good idea to go reach the other groups uh, who use PET to ask them, hey, do you have there any bugs you suffer from or features you need? Do you want to help maintaining this piece of software and stuff? Anyone wants to do that? I do. <laughs> We only have three minutes left, so I, th I think we can close the PET chapter. And anything left to say? Should I prepare Dam for his ceremonial role? <laughs> oh, okay. Me. Maybe one thing that is in the list that might be need to be agreed is the the project member being I don't know if it's controversial or not. Yeah, thanks for reminding us. Then Rene also said we should talk about it. He is not here. Uh, the the um, the idea to ping inactive members, which you Anska have done at at one point. Should we do it again, maybe, or uh, some regular intervals? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, the problem was that I actually did not finish that. Um, I think I have somewhere a file, but it's now totally outdated. So I did ping them, and some people replied that they um, no longer have time or so. Uh, some people said they will do things in the future. I think some are also have. Uh, but cleaning up the accounts I have never done, actually. Yeah, so question one, do we want to do this in the future? And question two, who does it? If, if one equals yes. So uh, it's a bit difficult to coordinate here because Dam doesn't have video, so he can't tell that we're not talking about <laughs> his project right now. Oh, but maybe we should just uh tell them to go ahead with the removal and and all of us who dearly love svn will shed a tear if any such people exist okay so big celebration of one year after moving from svn to git dam sitting at the beach in bulgaria i guess will now remove svn i mean our svn repository <laughs> 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 right DAC RM SVN is later today when nobody's looking. <laughs> Good, so coming back to the membership ping, what are the, the feelings in the room? 
Is this something that should be done? Is it a burden? I mean, it looks a bit funny, but does it cause any practical problems having lots of members in the group? Well, the only practical problem is that membership in any Aliot group gives shell access. And, well, I, I don't think most people mean harm, but of course, uh, if somebody gets access to the account of somebody inactive, it means that they can log in on Elliot if they want to. Well, okay. oh, and time's out, so maybe we should discuss it on the mailing list later anyway. Or in the hack lab. Okay, Dam says it's running now, so thank you, everyone, and sorry, Talkmeister. Thanks, Damian. Thanks, everyone.